book title for today is The Foundation of Success, okay? For those of you that are just walking in, you realize that, uh, yes, there was a mistake in the bulletins are from last week. And we are going with the divine right order of the universe because here at Joyful Gathering, we not only teach these principles, we walk them. Am I right? Yes. Yeah. Right? Okay. So, with this minor setback, it's not really a setback because it's just moving us, it's propelling us forward to get into this whole atmosphere of success, which is one of my favorite words. So it's a new series of talks, so we're going to have a few of these on success. We're going to use a theme quote from a very brilliant, creative person. It's not Nikolai Tesla, but it's the one that copied him, Thomas Edison. So um, Thomas Edison, the wonderful Thomas Edison, uh, I'll, I'll probably say this quote a lot because he actually said this quote. If we did all the things that we are capable of doing, we would literally astound ourselves. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. I want to make that statement personal to us, so I'm going to just slightly rephrase it. If I did all the things that I am capable of, I would literally astound myself. Like that? Yes. Good, let's say it. If I did, oh, can you say that to me? Unless you know it, you know it? Okay. All right. If I did all the things I'm capable of, if I did all the things I'm capable of, I would literally astound myself. I would literally astound myself. That's the truth. You would astound yourself by doing all that you're capable of. And it sounds really good. It sounds real good, doesn't it? It sounds really great. And I want us to be astounded. I want to be astounded every day, literally astounded, with the power that lies within me, that lies within each and every one of us. And it sounds so great. It really does. Something that is as close to us as our hands and feet, something that is really, that we can feel that lies within us, That that incredible part of ourselves that is our true selves that enables us to do all the things that we didn't even know that we were capable of doing. You ever have a goal or, or an intention and you step out and you do it and you don't even, it's like so much more takes place mm -hmm. and you go, wow, I didn't know I could do all of that. Mm -hmm. We had so much within us that we don't know that how great it is. If that God within us is limitless, we say that. If God is limitless possibilities, so are we. So are we. And I, I, I really believe that. And saying in another way, our focus is going to be on the power that we have at our fingertips to succeed. However you define succeeding. Perhaps you might feel these are some of the definitions. A purpose-filled vocation. A soul-satisfying relationship. Dynamic, vibrant, and radiant health and vitality. Success could be. A deep and abiding sense of your oneness with God. That's a great success. An abundant flow of prosperity. Walking in the state of grace and inner peace. That's lovely. Mm -hmm. These are all what success is. Success, experiencing deep and abiding joy regardless of the conditions and circumstances. Making a profound difference in the lives of others. Maybe success means some of those things or even more. How about all of those things? Oh, and more, yes. and more. However you define success, this is the time to astound yourself by recognizing and aligning with your inner creative power. That inner creative power to be and to do so many things, so many things. In his book, Creative Mind and Success, Ernest Holmes writes this, the founder of Science of Mind writes this. If we are made in the spiritual image and likeness of God, then one, our mind must be made out of God's mind also. 
have the same, we also have the same power in our individual lives that God has in the universal. If all things are created by the mind of God, and our mind is part of God's mind, which it is, we know this, then we are able by thinking, by thinking, to set in motion a power that creates. Of course, we do not create that power. Neither do we coerce it. It is ours to use, either rightly or wrongly. That we do not create the power, remember that. We create our situations, and I'm gonna get into that today. I have a great, a great lesson for today. It is a lesson. By using the right way of thinking, thinking rightly. And thinking rightly means to produce the love, the peace, the happiness, the joy, the abundance, the prosperity that is the truth of our being. We're using that which is already present within us. We're tapping into it. And wrong use of the, this power doesn't. It doesn't tap into any of those things. It can't tap into them. We have to be in alignment with right thinking, alignment with our own divine self, our divinity, that good within us, that does good, that sees good, that is good, because it is God-ordained. So this month we will use this spiritual concept that we are one with the power of the universe to create so we can use it. So we can use that which already exists. And we can use it to create a successful life. And we will put that concept into practice by pulling some wonderful tools and techniques. The books were supposed to be here. They will be here next week. They'll be here today at my house. So if you all know where I live, you can come over. <laughs> because this book is so great. OK, the name of this is by Jack uh, Canfield. And the name of it is Success principles, how to get from where you are to where you want to be. Really good book. We're going to use some of his tools in it today. <laughs> and so we're using this book so that we might literally astound ourselves and step into that greatness, that uniqueness, that individualized expression of the divine that is the truth of who we are. OK? Mm -hmm. Yep. No? Yes. Yep. 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 They're all listening. Yes. Deep, deep in listening mode. Okay. So before we get started, before we get started, I need to give you a heads up that there are 64 successful principles in this book. And we don't have really the 64 you know, weeks to go over every one of them. So I've nailed them down to a few for the next few weeks. And I've selected the ones that resonated mostly with me. And I encourage you to explore this book, OK? Success Principle, Jack Canfield. <coughs> Today we la lay the foundation for success by exploring two fundamental examples. So these are the first two. Number one. This is a good one. They're both good. Everything's good, right? <laughs> Take 100% responsibility for your life. So according to Canfield, this is principle number one. The foundation on which all the rest lay. So this one right here is really important. So what exactly does it mean to be 100% responsible for everything that takes place in your life. And here's what I believe. And I believe that everything, every, everything, every single thing covered that comes into our lives is one, it comes, it arrives in one of four ways. We create it, number one. We promote it, we allow it, or we step into it. We step in it. We step in it, which is why I want to get. Stepping in it means that we don't see any way that we had anything to do with what is appearing in our lives. I know this happens a lot. I know it does. So it's still here. It's here. 
And we might say, how did I create this? How did I create this? Don't, I say don't waste your time and your energy trying to figure out how you created something. You're stepping into it. What is important, what is important is how responsible you are with it and how you respond to it. That makes all the difference in the world, our response to the circumstance. And one of the greatest ways to take responsibility is to use this formula that he has in his book. E, standing for event, right? R plus R, response, equals O, outcome. So you have E plus R equals O, right? right. Event, response, outcome. That's the order of it. If you don't like the outcomes you are, you are currently getting, there are two basic choices mm -hmm. that you can make. So first, you can blame the event. We don't do that for the outcome. Blame the event for the outcome. In other words, you can blame the economy, the weather, the lack of money, the lack of education, the government. The current government, the previous government, you can, you can just keep on blaming. You can blame your spouse, blame your friend, you can blame your employer. It goes on and on the list. But literally, we can blame all we want. It's still in our lives. 100% responsibility. If you're a golfer, here's some examples. If you're a golfer, you probably blamed your clubs or the course for a bad game. If you're a skier, you might have blamed a snowflake for slithering in right in front of your skis that caused you to fall. And other, other than the snowflake, all of these conditions actually do exist. And they may be things you have no control over, which a lot of things in our lives, they take place. Um, and it feels like we have no control. But you stepped in them, okay? So you're in them. That's the step in part. But they are not the deciding factors of success. If they were, no one who ever encountered any of them would have succeeded in any way. This first choice, then, is not the response of the person who astounds him or herself with all that he or she can do. The second one, however, mostly is. So this is the second choice that you can make. You can change your R responses to the E, the events, okay? The R, the E, the O. <laughs> Until you get the O that you want. Always changing, okay? The condition's there, the event is there, the E is always it's there. How we respond to the E equals what we experience, the outcome. You can change your thinking, change your communication, change the picture you're holding in your head, change your behavior, and change your life. What have you got to lose? If you don't do the change, it's gonna be the same. It's not working one way, right? And it's the definition of uh, insanity that we've heard many, many times. Doing the same things over and over again and expecting a different result. Ever work for you? Anyone? Yeah. Like to know, I've always had to change my behavior, whether I wanted to or not. Yeah. But usually I didn't want to have that outcome again, so I chose to do it. It was kind of to, the, to myself. So remember the formula, E plus R equals O. Got it? Yeah. It's the basis, it's the basis for your success. And it's the first thing that any of us can really do. Any of us. So then we move into principle number two. We're gonna cover two this morning. Because I think these two are so important. And if we just get these two, we are really on our way to complete that feeling of success, of, of feeling fulfilled. So the second principle in, in, in importance, so the first one is taking responsibility, this is the second one. After taking that responsibility for your life, to get in touch with what we will put on this earth to do. What we will put on this earth to be. And that's a big one, isn't it? 
Yes, it is. And we, we, we discussed this on Thursday in our practitioner class. In fact, this, this whole second part of this talk is what we spent two and a half hours, not practitioner class, on ministry class. <laughs> They're all practitioners, that's why. So in our ministry class, we came up with a vision state. So we're moving into something, we're not gonna do the visioning today, but it's something that people struggle with. Even people who are very spiritually advanced and evolved struggle. What is my purpose? What am I here to do or be? So we're gonna have some processes around that. And you've probably all heard this powerful and also true statement by Marianne Williamson. You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. You were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within you. Just love that, yeah. that every day. Well, Canfield writes this. With a purpose, Everything in life seems to fall into place. To be on purpose means you're doing what you love to do, doing what you're good at, and accomplishing what's important to you. And when you truly are on purpose, the people, resources, and opportunities you need naturally gravitate toward you. The world benefits too because when you act in alignment with your true life purpose, all of your action automatically serves others. You have a purpose. We all have a purpose. And if you know that when you've made, if you've done this before, a very, you have this very strong knowing like the example that was given. You have this knowing, somehow, this is gonna happen. You don't know how, but you know it's gonna happen. You know the what. It, easily and effortlessly comes to you. Now the change of moving through it might be a little more challenging, but you do it because you can feel the pull within your heart. That's your purpose. Within you, there is a purpose, and that purpose, listen to this, will not leave until it is fulfilled. People die with that desire, their dreams within them. We are each born with a dream within us, a dream seed each and every one of us. And it's kind of like, like the princess with the pea under the mattress, and I can relate to that, who can't rest until it's found. <laughs> they cannot sleep, you know? So you might postpone the fulfillment of your dream, of your intention, of your purpose for years, but because God implanted this purpose in the center of your being, where it cannot be erased, it cannot be lost. What we can do, and what we do quite well, is we lose sight of it. We forget it. We cover it up. We forget it even happened. It's, but we can feel it within us. It's always this longing within us. God put it there. Divinity put it there. We cannot erase it. We cannot lose it. We cannot truly ever forget that purpose. So what is this purpose? What's your purpose? Right? It isn't to win the lottery. That's not your purpose, although you very well might do that. It's not your purpose in life. It isn't to be chosen by God to be, oh, it isn't, it isn't chosen to be the CEO of your company, although you very well might be. It isn't to become the savior of the world, although you, maybe you could, I don't know, probably not. Your purpose isn't to marry a certain person or to take an around the world cruise or to turn left or to turn right, although those things very well might be a part of your experiences. Your purpose is to awaken to who and what you are in God and what that God is in you. That is our purpose, each and every one of us, to awaken to that indwelling divinity that is 
filled with all of those beautiful qualities that we describe God as, and that's who we are. Two fundamental elements exist in a purpose of awakening to who and what you are in God, two, and who and what God is in you. And those two elements are joy and service. Joy and service. What brings you joy and how does it serve the world? And there are many, many different ways to approach this defining of your purpose. And there's a very powerful and extremely simple exercise in the book, in Jack Canfield's book, Success Principles. It involves spending a little time in quiet reflection and asking yourself these questions. And then combining the answer to the questions, and there you get your statement. It's really good to have a vision statement. And I had called it in class a vision-driven life. I feel that I made that up, but I'm sure there's a book out by that name or something. Every time I make something up, <laughs> one mind, but a vision-driven life, yes. So what we have right now is inside your bulletin, there is a piece of paper I'd like you to take out. Does everyone have pens? I'm hoping that most of you do. If not, our usher will give out pens. OK? So you have your paper out. I'm going to go over it with you. I'm going to go through this. So I told you this was a lesson today. This is a lesson. It's a good lesson. OK? So here we go. First, and, and it's written down for you, identify two of your unique personal qualities. And I'm going to give you a couple of uh, examples, and then I'll be quiet for a second. Enthusiasm, creativity, logic, passion, humor, the gift of music. Two, right? Two on your paper. And you can do this also, take that paper home, and you can do this at home. Okay? The second question then is ask yourself, what are one or two ways I enjoy expressing those qualities when interacting with others? might be to support, to inspire, entertain, motivate. It could be any of those things. And the next thing. This is an assumption. Assume that the world is expressing perfectly right now. What does the world look like when it's expressing perfectly, right? How is everyone interacting with everyone else? What does it feel like? And you're going to write a brief, like a, a statement, a sentence on that. It could be a perfect world is a joyous place. It could be that there is only love that exists amongst people. could be a place where people are expressing their talents freely. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to move on to the next one. I'm doing a quicker version of this. It should take you a good 30 minutes when you do this in the quiet of, of your home. Mm -hmm. Finally, combine the answers to the three questions into one single statement. Mm -hmm. So take the two qualities, how they affect others, 
how it would be in a perfect world. I'll give you an example. My purpose is to use my creativity and enthusiasm to support and inspire others to freely express their talents in a harmonious and loving way. That's just an example. The whole point of this is to enable yourself to have a strong and powerful purpose statement. This is part of living a successful life. Your own vision statement, your own purpose statement for you, for your life, is how you're going to express who and what you are in the divine and who and what the divine is in you. It's really a connection to your own divinity. And why is it so important to do this? With a purpose, this is so true, with a purpose, life seems to fall into place on purpose. It seems to, you know, I say this, and a lot of New Thought writers have said this, that the universe conspires for our greater good. Well, you have to have some kind of vision or purpose statement within yourself that you can feel that directs your life. It means that you are doing what you love to be doing, what you're good at, and accomplishing what's important to you. Being on purpose means God is expressing at the highest level through you. There's only one life. So that life is God's life. That life is my life now. And so there can only be this infinite that's expressing through me as one energy. This one energy that expresses through each and every person. That one energy, which is divine. We come in and we leave. We have this human experience in between. But that divine energy is the truth of our being. And it has within it implanted the seed of who we are, our divine self, and truly embrace it and live it. So we start right here, right now, with these two first ideas to achieve success in life. This is successful living. Finding and connecting with that which you were born to achieve. And of course, we start. We always start with consciousness, right? Because that's where everything starts, in our consciousness. One, taking responsibility. And two, get clear why you are here. Responsibility and purpose. These two ideas lay the foundation for the other principles. And we're going to explore some of those next week. So I encourage you this week to look at how E plus R equals O. Right? We all remember what that is. This is your formula. This is the formula that you have control of the R only. Right? You have control of how you respond to any situation. And that changes the outcome. It always does. So carve out like 30 minutes or so this week and really walk on this. Really work on, on your vision statement, your purpose. And finally, remember this, that you were born to manifest, to manifest the glory of God. And it, you don't serve the world by playing small. None of us do. We serve the world when we step out, when we express our own divine self. I don't care how it looks to others. Everybody's crazy anyway. I mean, the whole world, I've like said, is in the same asylum. Who cares? Step out as long as you're harming no one. As long as you are harming no one and are coming from your authentic self, just be yourself. 
just as we're going to do tonight at our karaoke, I hear some people are going to really come out of their closets or their boxes or whatever you call the places where people hide, their inner self, yeah, going to come out and express it. Because we are ready, I think we're all ready to start manifesting some real success in our lives in every possible way. Right? Yes. Amen. Yeah. And amen. Yeah.